So today we're going to be talking about uh, how to pitch and how to pitch your ideas, your projects, as well as yourself. And so the checking code is aptly named pitching. And so what we're going to talk about specifically when it comes to pitching is what it is. So you might know pitching is like, you know, obviously how to, how to throw a ball on a pitch, but in the business world, pitching is a presentation of a idea to potential investors and you pitch a business because they need resources. So if the goal of the, is to raise money, the target of the pitch is an investor and some, the thing, the thing you can have to understand with pitching is it's a very vague concept in general, and it can apply in many ways. In, a, in essence, you're offering something, looking to get something in exchange, and you're basically selling something. And this applies to anything, whether you're pitching yourself, whether you're pitching projects, whether you're pitching an idea, you're ultimately all always doing some form of sales. Uh, you may have heard the phrase that, you know, everyone's a salesman for themselves or saleswoman for themselves. It's kind of, it's very unfortunately true. And so it's important to get good at how to sell something. So there are three main things to pitch. Uh, you're an, an idea, a project, as well as yourself uh, for a job. We're only going to do that. The checking code is pitching, uh, Ivy. So yeah. And so, yeah, so there are three main things to pitch. And so we're going to first talk about pitching an idea. So when you're pitching an idea, there's their audience is three main things, perspective, current team members, an investor, or your boss. So we'll kind of walk through these three things. So you could be potentially working on a team and saying, hey, I have an idea, an idea on how to do something. Like you could be saying, you know, I think we should be doing this. You could be telling your boss, I think instead of taking writing hub tutor tickets like on Zoom, I think we should be doing, you know, all the car appointments and only do them on certain days, or I should be, I should be able to book meetings my own, like whatever it is, you should, you have, you have your own idea how to do something. So that with that situation, that would be kind of pitching towards maybe your boss or to other team members. You could also be pitching like, Hey, I have an idea. It's like a startup. It's like Twitter, but for cats, like that could be a potential product. And so these are the kind of different, this is, these are the different kinds of offers and in both situations, you have asks. So maybe with team members, your audience joins you. So say you posted in looking for a group, your pitches, I have a great idea for SD hacks. Your ultimate goal is for people to join is, is for people to join you in your team for SD hacks. With an investor, you want money or you want support. And then for your boss, you want your boss to kind of let you do what you want to do or et cetera, enabling you. And so like, this is like the ultimate reality of how pitching is. There's three main components to everything audience offer and ask and that as we're going to see as we move on from pitching from idea to other pitching it's ultimately the same kind of concept and i'm also going to say the word pitching so often that i don't really think it's a word anymore but i think it is a word so with pitching an idea it's important to understand a few things you got to know your audience and so when you are pitching target your pitch to be relevant uh it sounds like buzzwords it's, it really is buzzwords but at the same time we just call it keywords so say you're pitching an idea to like an investor, you want to kind of throw in the keywords that they want to hear. You know, be like, oh, you know, we're going to be building something with that uses a, we're going to be building a social network that will that will increase virally and it will uh, work on peer to peer network. I don't even know what I'm saying, but the thing is, if you if you make sure that the pitch you're saying has the right keywords with it, it will generally perform better. If you're talking to your boss, you might want to throw in like productivity. It's going to be more efficient. People will be happier. It'll, it'll be good for them. Another thing you want to kind of think about when you pitch an idea is try to anticipate questions, not necessarily to like answer all the questions ahead of time. It's important for your pitches to be brief, but if you do the research on what you're going to receive, you'll come across as much better. Cause the first thing that happens after you pitch an idea is someone tells, okay, then they have an idea, right? If someone pitches me some idea, I'm immediately going to ask them, but why, or I'll, I'll, you know, I'll have a question about what they're doing. So if you, uh, if you have like, you know, prepared a little bit for it, then you'll be good. So make sure you prepare your questions, like what questions you might be getting ahead of time. Don't answer them, but just make sure you're aware of them. The other thing is you want to kind of watch and get context. Um, there's a famous rule that no one's more interesting. No one's interesting after 30 minutes with pitching. The rule is no one's interesting after 30 seconds. So you don't want to pitch for more than 30 to 40 seconds because then you kind of just sound really boring. Uh, right now, I'm going to be trying to talk for less than 30 minutes because I'm doing a lecture. But if you're pitching to someone, right, I mean, imagine someone in a costume in the elevator and they're just like, all right, here's my idea. They just don't stop talking. They don't like, no, you have to like calm down. You know, once you, once you explain yourself, kind of 
asking or leave yourself open for questions, get context. If they're, if they're kind of into it, you can kind of go for a call to action. If they're like, I don't like, you know, I'm not really interested. You can try to, you know, ask them a question like, Hey, what doesn't interest you about this? And kind of go from there. The other most important thing that's really hard to understand is don't oversell, don't over pitch. Uh, oftentimes you might be, you know, you might be really trying to get someone to understand and join you, but, and they're in their, into it. They're nodding their head. They're engaging. They're like, wow, this is great. Don't go too far. Cause then it kind of, it's like, you know, don't come across as desperate. This is very true in the business world because the more you pitch after a certain point, it starts to do negative work. So if they're into it and they're good, do the call to action and try to move on. If you want to keep talking to them, talk about something else, but don't, don't keep pitching after a certain point. It's hard to understand where this level kind of is, but if you can tell that they're liking it and they've agreed and they have, you know, acted on your call to action, we can call it a day. And so, yeah. And that's for what the call to action is in the pitching an idea situation. The call to action is when you kind of say, would you like to join my team? Would you like to invest in my company? Can I do this boss or whatever it is? So this is just pitching idea. This is like the most vague version of pitching but I hope that makes sense. I don't see any questions in the chat, so I'm gonna move on to the next one, which is pitching a project. So pitching a project, uh, this is mostly a big reason I'm gonna talk about this is I think there's an EC reverse career fair coming up. It's a cool career fair where you get to pitch, you get to like basically set up a booth and companies will come to you to see what project you built on. So that, that's definitely gonna be an audience of recruiters and invest and interviewers. And there's always also the opportunity of you're pitching a project to an investor. So we'll talk a little bit about this. So what are you offering to the to your audience for the project? Well, when you're talking to an interviewer, the, really what you're doing is you're offering an example of the, of the kind of work you can do. You know, you're explaining to them why the Pokemon generator you made is a fine example of how you will be a great full stack developer. It's ultimately an example. There, I mean, obviously, when you're, if you're at a reverse career fair or if you're at a career fair and you're talking about a project you have built, you're not talking to them about the project you built because you want them to acquire your project for like $5 million. That'd be great. But the real reason you're talking about your project is because you're trying to say, look, I have built this before. I have built cool things before. You should hire me because I'll do that. Which leads you to, into the ask, which is usually for an interview or a job slash internship. And then the other chance, if you're looking, if you're talking to an investor, you want funding. This is funding for your project. That's a typo. So again, you always want to know, the first step is always know your audience. So if you're talking to a recruiter, they really will not be up to date on innate technical details. So don't start going into like a really in-depth explanation of how you use sockets with like, uh, you have sockets, you put it, you deployed it on a bunch of things and you, I don't know. But the thing is you actually want to be slightly technical. So if I say, if I explain that my socket design use like an object oriented design in the back end for some reason, whatever, they're going to be like, I don't know what it means. But if you tell them I deployed a socket, web socket implementation on AWS, they'll be like, whoa, Amazon, AWS, they know cloud and they get excited. So with recruiters, you want to highlight those things, you know, highlight the key technologies and you also want to kind of highlight collaboration whenever possible. Um, if you've ever, if you work with a team, mention that, like it goes a long way. And that kind of gets me to the second audience. If you're talking to an interviewer, don't think of an interviewer as anything other than a potential coworker because all interviewers are in industry is just regular people who have been called to stop working and see if they, if they want to work with you instead. And so that's why most interviewers often kind of feel like they don't want to be there. It's because they're trying to do, they want to do their actual job, but instead they're here talking to you. So you want to make sure that they feel, oh, this is a cool coworker. I would like to work with this person. So show the collaborative features of your project showcase tech that you learned and did on your own because coworkers really don't want to hire someone who's like, oh yeah, I didn't know what to do. So I didn't do it. No, you want to tell them like, oh yeah, I had a problem. I didn't really know how to do this. So I went and I talked to people and I learned how to do it. I Googled, I went to like hack school, ECM hack school. I went to like some workshop. You want to kind of pitch that. Uh, it's also really important to me, at least uh, whenever you're talking to an interviewer, try to crack jokes, try to be a normal person. Uh, with recruiters, it's less important because recruiters are more looking for robots who can code. But for interviewers, they're looking for coworkers. So I tend to crack a lot of jokes whenever I can. So after you do the initial pitch of the project, try to talk, try to be normal. You know, hopefully you yourself are a good person. You're fun to talk to. And yeah, just be yourself when you are pitching and when you're after you finished pitching, just because it's going to be easier to talk to you. 
And then last, if you're talking to an investor, and this goes for really everyone, they want to know you're going to be successful on the job. Um, they, they're investing in you, whether with a job or with money, because they believe you will be successful and they want to know, they want, they're looking for signs that you will be successful. And so they want to kind of know how have you handled unexpected problems? How have you planned ahead to resolve future problems? And then why did you make certain decisions? And so this is really important. So with investors, they're investing a ton of money into you and they want to know, will we get our money back? Will, we, will it go higher? And so they want to know if, you know, if you're driving and there's a pothole, are you the kind of person who's going to just be like, all right, guess got to get a new car. Or are you going to try to find a way to get it out? Like, how are you going to resolve the problem? And so that's really important to, to kind of convey. And so this brings you to like the biggest tool that I think is useful. You might've seen this before. It's called situation, task, action, result, or STAR. Uh, it's a common behavioral interview method. You can kind of apply it to anything. And so I'm going to explain how you can apply it to pitching a project. So situation, uh, you want to explain briefly why you decided to build this project. And in the task, you're going to explain what decisions you knew you would have to do to build said project. In the action, you're going to explain the key decisions you made and why you made them. In result, you want to talk briefly a little bit about what exactly your project does and ideally touch on how the decisions you made are resulted in this outcome. So that's really a lot of stuff. So I'm going to give an example. So this is a project I built a while ago. It's called Shaw Cloud Services. Uh, basically what it is, it's a cloud service. It's not really, it's basically just a online paste bin where you can upload files and then download them. And so basically let's, let's kind of break into the, the four categories of situation, task, action, result. So situation, I had to transfer many different files to many computers, which was often changing for my robotics team. And you can see here, I use this opportunity to kind of flex something else. You know, you always want to like, you don't, you want to make it natural, but you want to kind of natural. I, I really think naturally flexing is really good because the recruiters will be like, oh, cool. They're on a robotics team collaboration. It's, they're not even going to be paying attention to that, but you got to kind of subliminally message and tell them, okay, highlight everything. So then I move on to the task. So I need to find a way to easily transfer files across many computers, quite brief. Action, I decided to build a zero authentication system using Google Firebase and react.js to allow anyone to upload and download files on the internet. Really brief, I quickly explained that I am using Firebase, I'm using React. Wow, it's pretty cool. And result, I was able to easily send Unity projects, robot code and 3D model files using my, zero, my, using my file hosting site. Because it has zero authentication, it reduced friction for my team and enabled us to move faster. And now just like that in just four slides or three slides, we've conveniently explained, we've explained what the project does. We've managed to highlight all these different skills like React and Firebase that you could you know, do in a real job. And we've also managed to share, oh, look, he worked on a team, he's thinking ahead, et cetera. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions on this. Um, yeah, so yeah, pitching a project. Um, really, if you know your audience, and you know what exactly you're looking to get out of it, you can kind of develop a general star for it and then be really efficient and just kind of explain what you're going on. And then they'll be like, oh, wow, what a cool service. And you can talk more about it. <coughs> Obviously, this is my example. You can kind of apply this star to really any project. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the last most important part. And this is kind of like the key to everything. It's how do you pitch yourself? So often at career fairs or networking events, you're going to have an opportunity to talk to a recruiter to express interest in a position. So what's your goal? Your goal is to land an interview, right? So say you're at a career fair. Uh, back in the olden days, we used to meet up in person and stand in giant lines for, for the chance to have 30 seconds to talk to a recruiter. It was kind of chaos. But if you, got the, if you got, were able to talk to a recruiter, it was actually really you had a really high chance of being able to land an interview. And so if you knew what to do, you could actually just take that 30 seconds and convert it to an interview. I was fairly good at this. And I'm, so I'm gonna to try to share how you can kind of take that 30 seconds or 40 seconds moment to get an interview. So the first thing you wanna know again is know your audience. And I've said this a lot, this is the most important thing. Whenever you're talking to someone to get something out of them, you should know who they are and like what they are looking for. So if you're at a career fair, what is the recruiter looking for? 
And you can often figure this out because all these career fairs, they'll have a link saying apply it at amazon.jobs or, you know, cisco.com slash jobs, whatever. And if you go to the website, they're going to have a list of, we are looking for a highly dedicated C++ developer with 95 years of experience or whatever. You know what they're looking for. You don't have to have all the same things. Very important. Just if you know what they're looking for, and if you and if you fit just one of the things they're looking for, hammer that down. Make sure you they know that you fill that you fulfill at least one of the requirements. Doesn't matter if you don't qualify for everything. If you qualify for at least one, make sure they know you qualify for at least one and go from there. And so you want to highlight relevant experience about yourself. And so this kind of brings us into the next most important thing. It's called elevator pitching. So when you're pitching yourself, you often have a very short amount of time. So there's this thing called elevator pitching. This kind of comes from the idea that if you're in an elevator and this poor CEO or whatever is in the, happens to be in the elevator with you, you have 20 to 30 seconds to kind of tell them who you are and why they should hire you. And so the goal is for it to be like out of a movie where after you walk out of the elevator, they're like, cool, see me on Monday or whatever. Basically you have a short amount of time. How do you kind of convert that short period of time into an interview or internship, whatever. So this is a really nice guide. I took it from Indeed and I'm gonna kind of slightly adapt it for computer science and software engineering, but it really applies anywhere. So first step is the introduction. Uh, include your major, your name and your graduation year. And you wanna briefly say what you want. Make sure you kind of speak normally, don't be like a robot. Uh, a quick note on graduation year. If you are a junior or a senior, mention your graduation year. If you are not a junior or a senior, do not mention your graduation year unless you're like applying to a sophomore or freshman only internship. The reason I say this is, well, I can tell you from experience as a, as a former freshman slash sophomore, they don't like it. They don't want to know your freshman slash sophomore. They won't, that's not against them, but they don't want to know that because they're all looking, especially with internships, they're looking to hire someone to convert to full-time. So if you're a junior or a senior, then mention that graduation year, they'll get really excited. Otherwise, just don't, just leave it out. Hi, I'm Ronak Shah. I'm a computer science student here at UC San Diego, and I'm looking to get an internship in software engineering. Boom. You can just kind of breeze past it. You don't need to mention the graduation year. It can move on. And later they might ask, but ideally they ask after, after the whole elevator pitch. So after you've told them how amazing you are. So yeah, let's move into the about you. So this is typically what is your title or what you want to do. And you want to briefly kind of say, what have you been up to? So this is where I like to try to flex like, oh, I'm in a class right now, or I'm in an extracurricular, or I'm doing a project. So if you're working on a project, this is the best time to include it, actually. This is not the full on like how to pitch a project kind of thing, but this is more of like mention you're working on something. So say, uh, so if I was here, I'd be like, hi, I'm Ron. Uh, so I'm, I'm a software engineer. And lately I've, I've been working on a cloud service that lets me uh, share files with my friends. If I don't really have any projects right now, I'll talk about a class. Uh, lately, I've been enjoying my work with uh, data structures at UCSD. It's been really cool learning how sorting algorithms really work. And it's been really cool to kind of build the most efficient one. Boom, you can kind of flex a little bit. Look, I know what a sorting algorithm is. And then they'll be like, wow, what a nerd. And then they'll hire you. Like, that's the goal. So you want to kind of include these kinds of things. If no matter what, no matter what you've done, if you've done nothing, classes are totally fine. If you have some project, that's pretty cool to mention. If you have an extra kick there, you know, you can plug ACM. Whatever makes sense to plug here, this is what you want to do. And so after you do the about you, you kind of want to explain a little bit just what you want. So that way it phrases you up for the call to action. So basically be like, I'm looking for an internship and you want to kind of transition to this. So this is one kind of cheesy thing I say. I've been really enjoying finding solutions to the assignments in class. And I'm really excited to do this in the real world. It sounds cheesy. This part of like the kind of dance or whatever. You just want to kind of, this is, Step three is really transitioning from part two to part four. So you just told them what kind of work you can do. Now you're going to transition to uh, asking for something. And so then part four, this is important to gauge their attention. If they're into it, if they're nodding their head, they seem to be you know, enjoying talking to you. Be like, I'd love a chance to interview with the team to work at Google. If they don't really seem into it, you can say, I'd love to talk to you about what Google looks for in internships. You know. It's basically just that or one of the two. Like if they are into it, just go ahead and ask for an interview. If they're not into it, ask what you need to do for an interview. And if they say no, like, oh, I'm sorry, we've already filled our positions for the year. Totally fine. Do you mind if we connect? Do, do you mind if we connect on LinkedIn? I'd love to keep in contact for future opportunities. 
never try to let go of connection. I mean, you just invested 30 seconds. That's worth a LinkedIn connection. And so, yeah, so these are kind of like the four main steps for elevator pitching. I can tell you firsthand that it does work. Uh, I've actually formed connections uh, on with LinkedIn that have actually resulted in jobs in the, in the future. And so this is a really important skill. And so for that, we're going to be doing breakout rooms. Uh, I know breakout rooms are not fun. Don't leave yet. It'll be really good. Uh, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put you in a breakout room with two other people. And the idea is take the first four minutes to develop a pitch for yourself. I'll have a link to these slides. And if you can't think of anything, just make something up. You can pretend you're someone else. The goal is just to kind of get comfortable. Do, the goal is to get comfortable talking about yourself, like kind of flexing kind of way, and just talk naturally. So I'm going to go ahead and create those breakout rooms right now. Uh, okay. Uh, Okay. All right. So uh, thanks for coming to the workshop. Uh, we're going to do breakout rooms and I'll hop around to help around. Um, 